Welcome back, Dynamic Gang. If you're new to the channel, you already know what to do. So today we're going to be uh, checking out Dasko's uh, 92 Marvel Masterpieces. Um, I'm not going to go over the uh, the powers of these villains. I think I already covered them. A lot of times with these cards are duplicated um, in other series. But as an artist, uh, I was actually asked um, by a really good friend of mine... He, he asked me, why do I uh, buy posters or collect cards and stuff like that that I can draw myself? Because I'm not Desco. Jas Jasco is a great artist. And it's the same thing with Jim Lee, Todd McFarlane, Eric Larson, um, Andy Kubert. Uh, you know, you got um, Jack Kirby and... I mean, the list keeps going on and on. Um, so, so basically, you know, as an artist, it's fun to paint and to recreate things. But you know what I noticed? This is somebody's interp interpretation of a character. I can draw this. Somebody else can draw it. And it could be completely uh, a different uh, a different atmosphere, a different attitude. Um, there's actually so much detail that you could put into it that shows your signature artist um your signature drawing without even saying your name like uh if you ever checked out j scott campbell uh michael turner the late michael turner um you could see you know without even knowing uh them putting their signature down that yeah this this is i know who this is i know who the artist is because that's their signature right so, to make a long story short, <clears throat> you know, art art is an interpretation of, of uh, an extension of somebody's personality, of, um, you know, they're pretty much their skills, their talent, and you'll never get an artist that is the same. Why? Because art is, in my opinion, um, like a signature. You know, you'll or a fingerprint. Uh, there'll never be people with the with the same kind of fingerprint. You can always try to forge somebody's signature, and unfortunately, there is like that in the art business. But you have to remember that a, a great artist or a person of collecting of that kind of caliber is going to know. They're going to know the difference. They're going to know if that's fake or not. Um, there are very good people that can clone, um, and it, in retrospect, you know, it's fun to like, if I was to draw this whole series and that's, and that's fine if I draw the whole series, but at least, you know, that I'm going to give credit to the artist. I'm going to tell you, Hey, listen, uh, I got this from this card. Um, and the reason why that I would redraw any of these is because I'm a fan of uh, Jasco. So this is me paying homage to him not so much to be like you know i want to take his art for my own but i mean like there are people out there that try to forge things and try to get top dollar and you know they'll put their name to something and you know i and and you know what in art um i'm sorry in reading books that's called plagiarism you know like when you take word for word and that's actually against the law you get sued you get all that but the thing about drawing is you can make it your own. Like, let's say, let's say, okay, so I draw this figure. Maybe I won't have her hand that high. Maybe I'll have it down here. Maybe I'll have her other hand making a fist, but maybe I'll just use the pose. Maybe I'll still use the shadowing and the face. But by me doing a few alterations, I made that art mine, right? But it doesn't mean that I can't um, pay homage to artists, you know, and that's what I really like. I really like, uh, going to conventions. I really like interacting with people because art is phenomenal and you get to see, uh, people's sort of like, uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is their, um, their personality, all of these right here are Jasko's personalities. You can see like similarities 
in the details. You can see similarity in the characters, uh, in the shading. You know, you, you, you see these. And you could just tell, you know, his attitude, his style. And that's what makes people fan of people's arts. You know, like J. Scott Campbell, I think he's a great artist. Uh, he, his drawing women anatomy is on a next level. I love that. But in my opinion, um, I don't think he does so good with the guys. And that's fine. There's other artists. Uh, I, I always forget the guy's name. But there's an artist out there um, that I used to follow when I was a little kid. Um, and I'm ashamed to not remember his name. And I was only a little kid. I was about 9 or 10. But what really stuck with me is, you can see right here, look. You see how his feet are being, like, uh, covered? Well, the artist that I'm talking about is, uh, he, he came out, he had an interview, and he basically said that he doesn't do feet very well. He's a professional artist. He was hired by Marvel. He he's got contracted out by DC. He's very well known. But he didn't do good at the feet. So he would always, in every one of his um, arts, you would always see his characters covered, like his the, the bottom of the feet were always covered because he didn't do a good interpretation of drawing feet. Feet, hands, face, you know, everybody has their kryptonite of what they're, you know, what really they're, they're good at and what they're not good at. Like, like some people are great at painting and illustrating uh, the backgrounds and there's other artists that don't even do that. What they'll do is they'll just draw the figures or the, the characters and then um, they'll basically have an artist that come in the back and draw the backgrounds. There's also people who aren't good at inking. So what they'll do is they'll pencil and they'll, they'll have somebody ink. You know, there's other artists that can do all of them. They're very well-rounded individuals, but just because they can do it doesn't mean that everything they're doing is like top of the line. Um, meaning like it's their strong point. They can do it and, you know, but at the same time, maybe somebody would look at it and be like, ah, maybe I don't like the way he did the background. Maybe I don't like the way he shades. And that's what art is, is an interpretation. You know, you don't have to like every artist and you don't have to like everything that artist does. So as a J. Scott Campbell fan, I love his work, but I really don't think he's really good at drawing the guys. Um, I'm a big fan of muscles and um, especially with Superman and Batman growing up, uh, you know, I always forget the two artists that, that did Superman. I was never really a DC fan, but, you know, my uncles were. So I would look at the comics that they would have and I would study the uh, anatomy. And then when I was in high school, I was able to take anatomy class and you know, it's, it's pretty cool. But to make a long story short, um, it's fun. It is fun looking at people's art. It's fun to see where they're coming from. I was never a fan of abstract art, though. You know, like if we decided to go to... Um, if we decided to go to a museum and they're like, hey, listen, we're going to do a... Yeah, I know. It's kind of like messed up there. You have to remember, these cards are from when I was like... 13, 14 years old, you know, these are my original cards, you know, I, in all condition, man, I, I, I think it survived okay, but anyway, like I was getting, uh, getting at, I'm not going to stand in front of a painting for two, three hours trying to figure out what the emotions were with a blodge of paint, you know, but hey, I'm not knocking the art world because there's people out there that love that abstract art. They love to look at art and interpret it in a different way that somebody else was like if you were to look at a painting and you see like a let's say that they took all the colors and they splashed it together and then all of a sudden you're looking at it you're like oh wow i see uh i see so much rage and anger and and hostility with the colors that he used but then somebody else would come along well and be like well i see a lot of fear and resentment and anger but at the same time i feel a sense of kind of happiness you know, and that's, and that's, what's crazy about it is that you can, um, interpret art, uh, any way you want to, but with these, it's not really, you know, you can't really interpret, uh, 
when it comes to comics because it's not abstract. You know, you see somebody, you know, like like right here, you'll see somebody with a face, you see somebody with a horn, you see him with a smile. Now you could say he's sinisterly laughing, or maybe he's just hackling. Maybe he's not really being a sinister like that, but you know, I guess that's how you can interpret it. But I mean, like you can't change the fact that he's jumping. What are you gonna? Well, you could say that maybe he's flying or gliding or you know whatever it is. But at the same point, he's jumping from a roof. So right there, there's no room to interpret anything else. You know, <clears throat> like if you look at this card, right? You'll see Mole Man, and then you'll see him sitting on a throne. You know, that's basically what it is. He's sitting on the throne. He has his army in the background. Um, but I mean, like that's that's what I like about art. You know. A lot of people say that's why abstract is, is better because you can interpret it in a different way than somebody else could, you know, but you, this is pretty much straightforward, you know, there's no room to interpret anything. And I think to a certain degree, I guess I understand what they're saying, but I, I, I also like buying other people's art because it's an extension of themselves. And it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're taking home and putting on your wall somebody's um, personality. You're basically taking somebody's life that they already poured into a, a, a picture. And even though you're looking at it and be like, well, that's not his character. This is Mr. Sinister. Marvel owns this character. Yes, they own the name. They own... You know, the designs and and the colors, and they pretty much own what Mr. Sinister looks like. But they don't own how you would draw it. They don't own what kind of face and features you would give it. You know, there might even be one where you decide that um, Mr. Sinister, that maybe for a retro comic, instead of having his colors of... Um, like right now, let's say that you decided I'm gonna make his I'm gonna make his suit yellow. Right then and there, you decided that you're gonna make that character, you know, even though that's owned by Marvel, of course people are gonna know that's nightmare, but let's say that you made his suit yellow. That was your interpretation. Maybe that's maybe you wanted to go for something, you know, like a different design or upgrading a suit. And that's what's great about this stuff, is because you don't live within the bounds of being set you know the original the original foundation is the original coloring is the original suit right but you could play around with it you know you could play around with it you can make it your own and that's what i really think is phenomenal with artists is that they have this great interpretation of what they see maybe they'll see i've seen artists draw professor x standing you know even even when he had, you know, his uh, accident. But, you know, him by doing that, um, you know, people are like, they elaborate on it. And they're like, oh, well, he's using his psychic ability in order to stand. You know, he put a, a bubble and stuff. I don't I don't know too much about Professor X to, to make that call. But, I mean, that sounds feasible. But, I mean, that's that's the great part about drawing. You can make different colors. You can alter the character. You know, the other thing that I really don't like about comic books nowadays, and I'm going to keep it 100, is, you know, besides being woke and everything, is they, they uh, change the sexuality of these characters, right? Um, you know, like they'll make a character you know. Like, let's say that they made Wolverine gay, right? Okay, I guess that's an artist's interpretation. If you're talking about a different timeline, if you're talking about a different world, maybe Wolverine would be gay, right? But do you have to always alter, you know, the character in such a way to try to destroy the essence of that character for years and years of people growing up? Like, I grew up with Punisher, right? And they, because a... um I, I, a terrorist, of course, because somebody shoot up, shoot up the school or they shot people and they had the, the, uh, Punisher logo, uh, the Punisher, um, skull on his chest. Now Disney decided to basically 
Uh, I don't know if it's like that now, but they actually for a short time have taken away the symbol of Punisher. And, you know, because they took that skull and they, they altered it. It's the same thing with the Nazi, with the SWAT sticker. The SWAT sticker, Hitler decided to turn it on a, on a, um, on a tilt. It was... on a tilt where in India, I think it was India. It was one of those countries that had, um, I want to say India. I'm pretty sure it's India or something like that. They had, uh, it wasn't called a SWAT sticker though. And it was straight up and across and each one of those, each one of those symbols. And I'll even put it up there so you can see it in the video. Each one of those symbols meant a different, uh, a different thing. Like for your body. And Hitler took it and he decided to tilt it. And when he tilted it, he, it um, basically took um, <clears throat> the meaning of it and changed it. And now everybody thinks that, you know, a straight up and down, um, straight and down symbol that the India had for years before Hitler came along and took it. They're like, oh my God, you're racist. You you have that SWAT sticker. You have hate. If it's on a tilt, yes. If it's straight up and down, it's not. It's not the same. Absolutely. But but that's but that's what I'm saying. Like that's that's how crazy this world is. Like you could take something and just tilt it or just do one little detail missing on that, and you could destroy the whole premise behind it within a matter of seconds. And, and you know, and that goes for like the She-Hulk, right? Let's you, you, the TV show is on and it's not getting any good reviews. And, you know, <clears throat> I don't know if you like it, but I watched a few episodes and I'm not impressed, but that doesn't mean that I don't like She-Hulk the character. Because I remember growing up and reading a different interpretation of that. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> I just don't understand this, the She-Hulk the she -Hulk that's out now. And it's directed by somebody else. It's written by somebody else. So, in a way, that's that an artist interpreting She-Hulk in a different way. I'm not mad about that. You know what I'm saying? If we can accept the fact that... There's different dimensions. If we can accept the fact that we're not the only life in the universe, there's other planets with other organisms on it. And I don't mean like Hollywood aliens. I'm talking about uh, bacteria or vegetation because, you know, even though it's not from this planet, it's still an alien because <clears throat> it's not from this planet. It's, it's from that solar system. So it's, it is an alien, you know, maybe it's not an intelligent life form over there but i mean i mean for us we're we're more thinking about humanoid aliens but i mean they already found bacteria frozen in ice in mars and the the crazy part about that is that we're still debating if there's alien existence out there and there is bacteria that's on mars is, is a living organism or it was a living organism, and and actually they they thought it out and they started living again, right? Guess what? That is exactly what I just said. It was an alien because it's not from Earth. So, you know, if we can accept the fact that we're not the only ones, then there's no reason why we can't. Uh, Accept somebody else's interpretation of that, you know, and that's one of the real reasons that I'm going to go see the Little Mermaid movie that's coming out. They made Ariel black, right? Oh, wow. They made Ariel black. Okay. Well, maybe in a different universe, in a different timeline, Ariel is black. Who knows? Not everything is set in stone, right? But, you know, in this universe and in, in this, you know, in the universe, the original universe of Disney, you know, Ariel is white. Okay, so Little Mermaid is white. But maybe in a different universe, you know, if we have, like, let's say there's 10,000 Earths. One of those Earths, Ariel is going to be gay. Ariel is going to be black. Who knows? 
Just like in one of these universes, Wolverine will be pink. You know? That's why when you read a lot of these comics, it makes your mind wander. You know? Especially with Spider-Man, when they had the multiverse. Uh, you met all these... Uh, you met all these Spider-Man characters. Um, Scarlet Spider. Uh, uh, you had uh, Spider-Ham, which is Peter Porker. Um... <laughs> you know, like, and, and this is all different timelines, you know? And then you got Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is such a great character because he can teleport in, in between different dimensions. And there's millions of dimensions, right? Let's say there's millions of different dimensions. So, how do you know? How do you know in that dimension it's not? So, there's a place to have all this woke and, you know, crazy ideas that people have. You know, a great show, one of the one of the best shows that I had when I was watching um, when I was a kid called Sliders. Check that out. I'll put it up. I'll put it up so you can check it out. And what if you found a portal to a parallel universe? What if you could slide into a thousand different worlds where it's the same year and you're the same person, but everything else is different? Uh, I only have, for the bonus cards, I only have the Wolverine and Sabretooth. Uh, I know I got to pick up that. It's pretty expensive. But what I'll do is also put it in the video. <clears throat> but thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to my uh, going off on art and all this other stuff. But... Art to me is just an interpretation, an extension of that person. So if you're an artist, go out, feel free to buy other people's art because once you get big, people will be buying your art. And that's what you do, you know, as an artist. And there's no reason why I can't like somebody else's art. And there's always going to be somebody bigger and better than you. Don't ever be one of those people that... You know, always pat themselves on the back, be humble. And the best thing in the world is to be, is to have an open mind. So anyway, thank you for watching. Until the next time, Dynamic Gang.